It's Who's J Beats, Mr. Gas and Beats. We about to talk about structuring your beats. Your main job is to keep the artist interested in that beat. We don't want no boring shit. We don't want no beats that's just going over and over, over and over like a broken record. I want to help you get your beats to the point where artists is like, oh wow, the hook comes. Oh wow, the verse comes. Oh shit. You want this shit to keep changing up and keep the attention. It's like watching a movie and going scene to scene. Before I get into this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. We got way more sauce coming on 808s, mixing and more. I got my free mixing training. It's a checklist, some exclusive mixing videos. It's all in the description. Go check that out right now if you need help mixing. Now we in FS Studio. I'm about to play this Yeet type beat. Then I'm gonna let y'all know how I structure this beat. Tell you exactly why I cut some things out. I'm gonna show you how I went from the hook to the verse. I'm gonna show you how long I have them and why I have them that long. Then I'm gonna also show you some ways to transition from the hook to the verse without using like rises and effects and shit. So this is the first thing. I keep a short intro, eight lines. I keep it short because you want the drums to come in right after they feel the vibe. You want them to feel the melody and then boom, you want the beat to just start. I see a lot of producers around me that get placements. They start with the drums. I usually don't do that. It's very rare. It's never a right or wrong way, but you want to grasp the attention. If the melody is not that good, more than likely you should start with the drums. Let's get to it. I got my eight lines of melody. Listen. You see on my template, I got hook one. Of course, this is the second part of the hook. Then I got verse one. Hook two. So check me out. This is why I keep eight lines and I do it for every section. As an engineer, when I used to get beats and the beats are extra long, the artist is gonna tell me to cut the beat. The reason why I'm doing two eights for the hook, two eights for the verse, is so the engineer can actually cut and move the beat however he wants to do it. There's always gonna be enough space. The verse is not too long, the verse is not too short. The hook is not too long and the hook is not too short. Another thing that happens is when the artist is doing a short hook and jumps into the verse, you having these different transitions and variations, the artist can put the hook wherever they wanna put it and put the verse wherever they wanna put it. If it keeps being repetitive, there's no changes, so there's no change in the field, so they don't know what to do. So, usually on my first hook, I don't add a kick. It depends on the beat. If the 808 is strong, I won't add a kick. If the 808 is not strong, I always keep the kick there. So, when I go into my second part of the hook, that's when I add kicks, and that's when I make it a little more exciting. I'm going to show you what I do at the end of the hook. Got a kicks in, and listen to the end. At the end of the hook, I took that last snare out. So when you hear it just hitting with the 808 and no snare, it gives it a distinction between, okay, something new is about to happen. And then you can literally hear the beat drop again. So you don't want to keep everything consistent. You kind of want to just have some points where it's like, okay, we drop this off and bring it back. I learned that in a book called The Art of Mixing. It's called Density. You're going to have a lot of sounds at some points, and you're going to have a small amount of sounds at some point. So you might have 10 sounds in a beat. You might go from the hook having all 10 sounds and the verse going to seven sounds. You can easily make these transitions happen at the end of these patterns and in the middle of these patterns. I'll show you another example. Check this out in the verse. So I took the hi-hat at the end of the fourth line just so you can hear the snare rolls. The snare rolls are very, very distinctive in this beat, you feel me? feel me? So we go from the hook and then we go to the verse and the verse is just very open. We're dropping off a lot of hi-hats. We're dropping them off. Alright, look. Here's another one. When I start the second part of the verse, I took the snare out of the beginning. Listen. Sounds like it's flowing. Listen. Now listen to the end. So like I said, my main purpose of making these drops is so the artist says, oh wait, what's about to happen? Oh wait, this must be the hook, this must be the verse. You want the artist to kind of know so he can be like, all right, I'm going to stop rapping here and go back to my hook. 
go ahead and fly the hook over. That's what the artist will tell the engineer. So, if you guys haven't seen my first video on Producer Grind, I'm going to show you what exactly this is when you see pattern one, pattern four, pattern three, pattern two. This is what's going on. I started with this pattern here. I'm going to go to pattern mode. All right, so look, I started with that pattern. What I did was I didn't have the rest of these yet, the ones with these cuts and all that shit. I didn't have those yet. So what I did was I took this pattern one, duplicated it all the way out, just like the rest of these right here. I clicked this. When I hit make unique, it makes this pattern that's pattern one into pattern two. What that does is this is the exact same pattern, but now when I change anything in this pattern two, it won't happen to the pattern one. So what I've done is put a whole bunch of pattern ones down and made four of them unique, specifically one, two, three, four. I've made four of those unique. And then once I make the two hooks, the two verses, I just did this. Hold control, command B or control B if you're on Windows. I'm on Windows too, so it's Control B, or for Mac, it's com Command B. It's Control B on Windows, and for Mac, it's Command B. That's gonna go ahead and fly it over to the next bar. So, it's called Making Unique. Click this, you hit Make Unique. That's how you actually take a pattern and just make a clone of it, but it's actually different. You can modify it and it will modify the first one. I'm gonna show y'all one more thing that I've added to my structure that seems to get me in a lot of placements. All right, so look, this is the last thing I'm going to show y'all. Using two 808 patterns. The reason I use two 808 patterns is because of this. I'm using two 808 patterns because when I go from my hook to my verse, I tend to go more aggressive in the verse. Me as a producer slash artist, when I'm making these beats, I usually rap to them, I have a flow. When I get into the verse, I change the 808 pattern to a more aggressive pattern. It could be more aggressive or it could just be more open. But you want the vibe to go, okay, I need more vocals in this verse than the hook. Usually the hook are like one worded hooks, you know what I'm saying? Like slide, slide, some shit like that, drip. Like regular one word things are just small sentence fragments. In the verse, it's time to get to spitting. So that's why I add way more drums and I make this shit just very aggressive. So listen to it when I'm playing this beat and it goes from the hook to the verse. Listen, two different 808 patterns, adding this to your structure will make the rate of you getting placements the rate of people actually being excited listening to your beats go up people will actually be like oh shit like you're doing something because you keep having these changes so if you watch the producer ground podcast a lot of producers say that the ones that are on top of the billboards are the ones with the most changes so that's what i'm putting y'all onto in this video we're changing it up switching it up all type of shit here we go the highest out right there again listen if y'all like these hi-hats make sure y'all go to my store shop that who's a beats i got hella midi hi-hats going crazy for y'all drag and drop i promise royalty free you don't owe nobody i took the hi-hat out right here you got like three different choices you're taking out the hi-hat Taking an 808 out so everything else can breathe, or you're taking a snare out. The last resort that I usually take at the end of my verses is taking out everything except the melody, just letting it breathe. So listen. I just had a hi hat rolling. If I'd have took the hi hat out, it probably would still be cool. Listen.
If you enjoy it and learn from this structuring video, go to my description, subscribe, turn on my post notifications, and join my free mixing training. Get that checklist, watch those exclusive mixing videos, and I got FL Studio presets for the mixing. My Instagram is at whosjbeatsllc. Follow Gas and Beats as well. I'm out.